Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our functional JavaScript playlist. Uh, full link is in the description below if you're just jumping in right now. There's some stuff you'll probably want to know. We're covering reduce in this video, so let's get into it. Reduce is a method on the array object, and it will allow you to combine elements of an array in whatever way you specify with a predicate function. So I've included an example of map here to jog everyone's memory. So while map is a transformation, so it takes each element in the array and transforms it in a particular way, reduce will actually take two item, well take one item at a time, combine that item with another value, the previous value uh, in the array, and then move its way through the array based on whatever function you pass in. We'll explore that with, in a lot of different ways here, so let's get started. First of all, uh, I'm going to show this example of map. So if we create a variable called incremented numbers, uh, we have our nums array. We can map over that array, and each time it's going to take one value, and it's just going to add one to it. So if I run this, and instead of 1 through 10, we have 2 through 11. All right, so map returns in a list of the same length with the numbers trans with the values I should say transformed, whereas reduce in this case is going to sum all the values in the nums array into one. So I'll sh oops, so I'll show you first. We get a result of fifty-five, which is the total from one through ten. And how does it actually work? Well, what it's doing is each time that it's receiving a value in the array, it passes that value into an L into a argument that is actually referred to as value. In this case, I've named it y because I'm just working with two numbers. The first argument is actually the accumulator. So it's not the value from the array, it's a different value. And this value is the result of whatever was returned from the previous iteration of the function. So if we're doing x plus, I have it all explained down here, if we're doing x plus y, then by the time we're at 5, for example, we are doing the sum of 1, 2, 3, and 4 plus 5. That's then going to return as the accumulator, in this case x, and it will then be added to 6. So at the first call, we're getting an initial value, which I forgot to explain, my bad. As you would probably notice if you're astute, the first element in the array is not going to have an accumulator because there's no previous value for the function to have been applied to. So you have to, pa you have to provide an initial value. And so in the case of summing up an array of numbers, I've passed in zero because that is going to have no effect on the sum. So in this case, it's going to be passed, x is going to be the initial value that we passed in, which is 0, and y is going to be the first element in the array, which is 1. So you're going to do 0 plus 1, which is going to return 1. The 1 is then going to be passed into the accumulator, which is x. So I'll have x as 1 plus y, which is going to be equal to the second element in the nums array, which is 2 and that's going to give us 3. And then 3 is going to be passed into the accumulator, which is x. y is going to be the third or the yeah, the third uh, element in the nums array, which is 3. And then we're going to have 3 plus 3 equals 6 and so on and so on and so on until we get up to 55. That's how that's the basic structure for how reduce will treat any array. It has two optional parameters. We will get to those further on. Uh, but in case I forget them, one is the index and one is the array itself. So it's if you've been paying attention to previous videos, that's the same extra parameters that map that uh, map and filter both provide. The index of the current element being uh, iterated over, and the array that the element belongs to. So we did numbers because it's always e easy to start with numbers, but now we are going to work with some strings. So we have an array of strings. In, as per the previous examples, when I've worked with map and filter, 
I'm now separating the predicate function out so that it's easier to understand. And here we have the accumulator, the value, and the index of the current element. Normally, you'll give these a use specific or a context specific name. I'm going to refer to them as accumulator and value pretty much every time because I think that makes it uh, easy for you guys to consistently associate from one example to the next. But this is not necessarily my standard practice. So what this function is going to do is it's going to take each element in the array and it's going to list them vertically in one column with the current index. So it's going to be a zero index list. So we'll have zero dot one, or sorry, zero dot Steve, and then one dot Natasha, two dot Tony, and so on. And so this is basically just a little template string that says that the accumulator, so the result of all the previous iterations, is going to then be followed by a new line, which will make everything into one column, the index, a period, and then the value. All right, and so if we pass that predicate function into strings.reduce, then we provide it with the empty string as an initial value, because again, we need to provide it with that initial value and we want it to have essentially no effect. That will be creating a new line. We could get around that. I'll show you how we do that in another example down the line. Uh, but this is as close as we can really get to, a, to having no effect on the final result. And so what this is going to look like is a nice ordered list from 0 to 3. And so my reason for showing this is it's not like I just could combine them by smushing them all together. I didn't make this all into one big string, although you could do that. It would just be accumulator plus value. You can actually do much more interesting things with reduce because it's extremely flexible. It behaves simply by treating the results and applying the next value. And you're, we're going to see some really interesting examples of how that can work in the examples to come. So here we now are working with an array of arrays. I'll move this up a little bit just so that we aren't distracted by the example below. So here is an array of arrays which are of strings. And a super basic example of how you can work with an array of arrays is just to flatten the arrays. And so what you would do with that is take your array of arrays, you would reduce it with an accumulator, or with, sorry, with a predicate function, and that is simply going to take the accumulator, call dot concat on it, and pass in the value. And so at the point, for example, where we <clears throat> get to Tony Stark, we would already have flattened out these two together, and so it would just be like calling an, uh, an array with Steve, comma Rogers, comma Captain America, Natasha, comma Romanoff, comma Black Widow, dot concat with an array, Tony, comma Stark. And so the result of this is going to be a nice flattened array where everything is all in one list. So, like I said, that's a super basic example. Below, down here, we will, oops, I just moved that so that I didn't distract everybody, and then I'm showing it again. What we have down here is taking the same array and converting it into a CSV, which means that each, it'll just be a string that's a comma-separated value, and each row ends with a new line. And so you can dig into this if you want, but what I really want to point out here is that we are manually grabbing a first and a second value out of each array, or element out of each array. So in this case, we are returning a string, so we know the accumulator has to be a string, right? Because the return value always is going to be passed into accumulator, which means that we know our initial value, in this case our headers, are going to have to be strings and not, for example, an array of strings. And it'll be then taking our array of strings and we'll be manually grabbing out the first element and the second element, and that way we can get our first and last names. And the results that we get here will look like this. So you could write this to a .csv file, open it in Excel, and this would be two comma-separated columns, which is pretty neat. Now, you'll notice that there are 
two col or two rows that are actually longer. And here we are manually grabbing them out. And if we tried to call val uh, square brackets two, for example, there is no third element in the Tony Stark array, so we would not we would not be able to get that value. But what we can do is get sort of fancy here and start doing a lot more logic inside of our predicate function. So what I've got set up here is a predicate function called make CSV row. And this is going to take the exact same, this example uses the exact same array, and it's going to take a couple of strings. First one is the, uh, the return value that is passed into accumulator, and the second string is the value that is going to be treated in that row. So this predicate function is going to be called on each row, uh, each inner subarray in the array of arrays. So we will be taking the inner array here, for example, or the inner array here, and reducing that array into a single row. I'm just going to, since I'm only making this video once, let's just remove all this so that we can see it all in the same uh, frame. There we go. Should make it easier. So this is, this function is actually going to be ca uh, called on the value that is passed in to our main function. So if we look down here at creating super CSV2, you're going to call reduce on array of r's, so on this guy here, we're going to pass in as our predicate function, make csv2. But if we look inside of csv2, we are actually calling dot reduce and passing in make csv row. And that's because the value that's being passed into make csv2 is also an array of strings. So we can reduce it. And so this is a reduce within a reduce. And what that allows us to do, ignore the slices for now, is treat the value inside of the array of arrays and then return that as part of the uh, accumulated value for the next iteration. So what's happening here is for the first pass-through, we are going to provide an accumulator value of first name, comma, last name, comma, super identity. That gets passed into accumulator one. Make CSV2 is going to then receive Steve, comma, Rogers, comma, Captain America as Val1. All right? And, excuse me, as I mentioned in a previous example, if I were to provide an empty string value for this, for when we reduce over the inner subarray here, in that case, it was, provide, it was creating an extra new line. What this would actually create is an extra comma, because before every element in, or before every current value, we are passing in a comma and all of the previous values that have been treated. So in, in let's say by the time we're treating Captain America, this would be Captain America uh, preceded by a comma, preceded by Rogers, comma, Steve. Right? And if we're passing an empty string, that would mean that there's going to be another comma here. And we don't want that. So what the slices are doing are slicing off the rest of the array, this is slice one, so this is going to be everything except for the head or the first value in the array, so this will be Rogers, Captain America, and val1.slice, our initial value, will be the first element in the array, which is pretty slick, right? Now, when we iterate through our list, we're actually just providing the first value in the list as our initial value. And so then this will just reduce everything into a single comma separated string, it, that'll be our new row. It'll be, well, and then when we return this entire uh, new template string, this will be passed into accumulator and it'll repeat through everything. So if we look at what this looks like, we have dynamically reacted to the length of each array. Oh, sorry, the length of, well, it is the length of each array, but the length of each row and produced a comma separated values uh, string that is not manually selecting items from the array. Let me just, oops, do this. 
And so here is my favorite use of reduce, which you'll see in my function composition video. First of all, let's push this guy down because we don't really care too much about that yet. What I have are some basic functions here. So we have add one, which takes a number and adds one. We have double it, which takes a number and doubles it, triple it, takes a number and triples it. Pretty simple, right? If we pass that into, an, into a list, then we have some, uh, something that we can store in R of funks. What I've created here is a predicate function. I've given it a name apply. And this R of funks, we can see it always returns a number. Every element, or every, yeah, every element in that array is a function that returns a number. So if we are going to combine them together, they are still going to return a number. So we know that the, the accumulator is going to be also a number. And it's going to take a function because each element in the array is a function. What we are doing in apply then is passing in the accumulated value which will be a number, into value, which will be a function. All right? And what that's going to allow us to do then is give it an initial value, in this case 2. That will get passed into add 1. The result of that, which will be 3, will get passed into double it. The result of that, which will be 6, will be passed into triple it, which will be 18. And now if we run this... Boom, we get 18, and that's function composition using reduce. Now, in my function composition video, I showed this version, but you should know that the result is going to be exactly the same as the example above. This is more what we're familiar with from this video, but if you watch the function composition video, I explained this in depth. Uh, you'll have to also understand currying. So check out the currying video if you haven't seen that one. But what it will allow us to do is reduce over the array of functions, passing in apply. This will then return a new function that we can then pass in a value at any time. So this way we can pass in multiple values to the same function instead of having to pass in both the predicate and the initial value at the uh, call site. And so now, there we go. We use the same function from the same list that we only had to reduce one time, but we passed in multiple initial values. So this is really cool stuff. Sorry I tripped over my words a couple times there, but I was really excited to explain this stuff to you guys. So I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know. If I need to pass back through these examples again because maybe I just muddled it all up or you just need some questions answered, throw a comment down in the comment section. Check for links in the video description, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye.